Hi, I'm Amanda Jane Woodall and welcome to my fashion school. So, the fashion industry is known for having an obsession with youth and perfection. But did the 2000s era in fashion take this to a new level of unattainable beauty? To answer this, let me show you the top three models of the doll face era. Devon Aoki was born in New York City on the 10th of August 1982 and her father Rocky was an Olympic wrestler and also the founder of restaurant chain Benny Hanna. She also has a mother who is a jewellery designer and her brother found fame as a DJ. Her music connections got her modelling at a young age when she was spotted in the crowd of a music concert and Kate Moss, a family friend, is often credited with getting her introduced to Storm Model Management and she was signed when she was just 14. In 1997, she debuted in high fashion, sitting for photographer Nick Knight and wearing Alexander McQueen. And they created a very striking image which showed off a doll-like beauty. At the age of 16, Karl Lagerfeld chose Devon as a muse and she began walking for Chanel and Fendi despite being a tiny 5 foot 4. However, it wasn't just her height that made her unique in the industry as Devon had heritage from Japan, Germany and England and this had given her unique features that were very different from the thin and angular models of that time. She had a round face with prominent cheeks, freckles, almond shaped eyes and a very thick and downward sloping pout. By 2001 she was walking for some of the biggest designers in the industry including Anna Sui, Oscar de la Renta, Jean-Paul Gaultier and Marc Jacobs, as well as being the face of Lancome Cosmetics. However, her career in the industry was short-lived as she began acting in action movies like Sin City, Too Fast, Too Furious and Dead or Alive. The stunts in these films required Deva to go through gruelling training regimes which meant she didn't have time to do castings or to walk in shows. Devon had been a breath of fresh air for the industry and she had opened doors for a new era of softer, more youthful looking models. British model Lily Cole is widely thought to be one of the dolliest of the doll era. Born in Torquay on the 27th of December 1987, Lily was raised by her mother who unfortunately did suffer with some health problems and this taught Lily to be really compassionate and kind. At 15 she was shot by master photographer Stephen Mizell and she admits that she felt really anxious about missing and lying to her school. In 2003 she opened for Anna Sui's Spring Summer Ready to Wear collection show and was an instant hit in the industry. Lily Cole had a striking appearance with distinctive red hair that saw people describe her as pre-Raphaelite artwork. In comparison to Devon Aoki, Lily is actually 5 foot 11, which is considered the ideal height to be a model. Features including a wide forehead, pointed chin, bright blue eyes and a button nose saw her cast as the porcelain doll from another time. She was a favourite of photographer Tim Walker 
who is famous for his surrealist creative works for Vogue. A high achiever, Lily was able to combine studying at a private school and walking in the shows of some of the most high fashion designers such as Chanel, Dior and Jean-Paul Gaultier. <laughs> Lily was awarded a place at a top university. She studied art history at Cambridge alongside being chosen as the face of Machino in their I Love Love campaign, which was published in 2009. Lily enjoyed her time traveling and she felt really grateful to be able to do that at a young age but her social conscience kicked in and she started to question the ethics of the industry, especially the impact that modelling had on young and vulnerable women. She used the industry knowledge that she had gained about the impact of business and supply chains to become an activist and she founded her website impossible.com and this tech company aims to look at global and social problems and come up with solutions. However, making an even bigger impact on the 2000s runway was the defining face of the doll era, Australian supermodel Gemma Ward. Gemma was born on the 3rd of November 1987 and she describes her young self as not caring at all about what she looked like, preferring just to be silly and make everybody laugh. Sat in the audience of TV show Search for a Supermodel, Gemma did not intend to enter until a model scout actually approached her and she was actually too young to win the show but this landed her work in a Sydney magazine. IMG Model Scouts saw this image and she was immediately signed and just 10 days after she was flown to Milan for the Prada Spring Summer 2004 runway show. Prada had made her name by marketing ugly beauty and Gemma's otherworldly looks were perfect for the brand and so straight off the runway she was selected to work with Stephen Mizell on the Prada editorial campaigns. In 2004 she became the youngest ever model to be on the cover of Vogue magazine. She appeared alongside Lily Cole and the headline read the new pretty. Then in 2006 she became the first ever cover model for Teen Vogue. Gemma set a new standard for the baby doll era. She had blonde surfer waves, huge eyes and a very thin body and this gave her a fragility that could only be achieved by a young teenage girl. And Gemma later admitted that at this time in her career she was actually plagued by a really stressful eating disorder. Gemma became the star of the 2004 to 2007 season, working for every major fashion label including Stella McCartney, Miss Sony and Burberry, with Christopher Bailey recalling that she was so beautiful she looked like she had sunshine inside of her. One of her most credible achievements was taking over as the face of Obsession by Calvin Klein from Kate Moss and the Mario Sorrenti campaign earned her over a million dollars. In 2007, she was listed on the Forbes list for top paid models, earning over $3 million in that year. However, in 2008, Gemma's career took a 
hiatus as she appeared on the Chanel Spring Summer campaign and then was attacked by the fashion media and the tabloids in scathing reviews about her weight gain when in fact she had just changed from a child to a woman and there was really very little difference. And then alongside these cruel taunts from the media, she actually lost her then boyfriend, actor Heath Ledger, and was forced to grieve in public. But Gemma pulled through and she began to refocus her career into acting, starring in an Australian film called The Black Balloon and taking on a horror role in The Strangers. Her great work in the industry then saw her feature in huge productions such as Pirates of the Caribbean and The Great Gatsby. After industry speculation, Gemma actually re-signed to IMG Models in 2013 and then made a reappearance on the runway for Prada Spring Summer 2015. Now a mother of three, Gemma spoke to Harper's Bazaar Australia in 2003 about finding her voice in the industry and how she now wants to help young women, especially in terms of her experience in the industry and with an eating disorder. The 2000s was a time when the industry was looking for the new face of fashion and photographers and fashion designers were starting to blend creativity, performance, fashion and fantasy and these young fresh face models were perfect to play their characters. But the era of the doll was short-lived because these girls were not prepared to stay put in their place of these unrealistic standards. Instead, they sought new opportunities showing that they may have looked like dolls, but none of them were dummies. Lily was raised by her mum. Why have I always got creepy crawlies in my background? Like a witch cave in here. I apologise. 